Uh, how how does it like to work with Joss? And how do I feel like I'm involved in that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is my first day on the set. This is my second day on the set. This is when I met Joss. I, I, my, my first day had gone pretty well. And like, I, I was feeling like the, the day was supposed to be pretty good. So I come the second day. And Josh comes walking up. I knew who Josh was, so I was like, hey, he's going to tell me I need a good job. He comes right into my face and he goes, you actors! <laughs> you have faces in your perfect hair. You get all the money, you write his face. Nothing. <laughs> and I said, what are you, man? Uh, I'm just standing in the hair thing that you picked out for me last week. I've been wearing this costume that you said was okay. It's standing in a quarter million dollar set that you created, man. If I look cool, then it's your fault. <laughs> He didn't really like that. He's like, yeah, he's got those cheap <laughs> <laughs> And I said, you're not going to You want to trade? Uh, but Josh was very good to me. I don't know, I don't know what the kind of word he responded for that day, but that was probably the only unkind words he ever said to me. And um, I actually didn't shoot with Josh a lot. When Josh, when Josh, I think I probably shot with him about seven days total over those six years. Um, when Josh would write an episode and correct it, usually Spike would be rather gone. Um, but uh, on serious television, that's a gift. That's like having a week off is like gold, so that's no problem at all. Um, but I remember one time Josh came up to me early on, and this was the best note he gave me on acting, which is your second, the second part of your question. Um, which is because, uh, we have a little less uh, Lawrence Olivia, a little more Tim Roth, please. <laughs> So I try to put that note in every day. Stop acting. Okay. I know you played Lord Piccolo in the Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> yes! Did you ever get a chance to meet the creator of Kira Toriyama? Uh, Dragon, I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan. Did you ever get a chance to meet him? No. no. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I called him up because I wanted him to talk to my son because he's actually watching Dragon Ball and it's led to a lot of good conversations between me and my son about growing up. So I, I think my son is like the greatest thing in the whole world. So, so I wanted to meet him. He said, no, thank you. Would you like an autograph? And it was over the phone. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, I know you played Dragon Ball Z. Did you ever get a chance to meet the creator of Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to meet the creator of Dragon Ball Z? Yes, and then I realized what a jerk I've been. It's probably every father in the world wants him to meet their son. Uh, but a curatorial is a real artist, and I would love to meet him. Um, I, I think that one of the things that he was saying in, in Dragon Ball, which I, I thought, which I really clued into, my son didn't, was that that race doesn't matter. In Dragon Ball, there's like, it's a futuristic Japan, but you can tell it's Japan of the future because there's all sorts of races everywhere. It's not homogenous anymore, and nobody's even commenting on it, and to the point where the president of the earth is a dog. <laughs> so I mean, he was standing up on a mountaintop going, RACE DOESN'T MATTER! And so I love him for that. And also that he gave us a hero who's goofy and humble and meek, unless he has to be by him. And I think that's a really good lesson for young people to look at. So no, never met him, but I'd love to. Thank you. Yeah. 
I go, I'll bet when you get done with this episode, you're going to run back to the boards and never come back, right? <laughs> How did you grow? <laughs> so then I explained to them about the whole having fun thing, and then we started to get it. Yeah, so uh, one time I blew a stunt on Torchwood on my third day, and I opened up a really good wound but didn't tell anybody about it, needed stitches, but I didn't get them. The next day I started bleeding through my costume, uh-huh. but I didn't want anyone to know that I blew the gag the day before. <laughs> so John comes up to me and he says, dude, you're bleeding through your costume, what's up? And I explained to him what's up, and he gave order to doctor in, underneath the radar, so none of the producers found out, and stitched me up on my trailer and got me back up. So that's John Merriman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he rolled off his pants to show you what he's got. <laughs> <laughs> he really will do that. But, uh, he's got it, so, yeah. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.